We're on the phone with Nick Durham, St. Thomas More head wrestling coach. Nick, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. You know, our area high school wrestling coaches seems like they all excelled at the sport, and you're no exception. You led it all four years at a high school in Colorado. Yeah, in the little town of Burlington, Colorado, where we were 3A was our uh, division, and uh, we just happened to be in one of the, the toughest regions in the, the entire state when I was wrestling. Being a freshman and you lettered, you must have started young. Yeah, I started wrestling about third grade, and it, it was kind of a family thing. We, uh, like Both of my brothers wrestled, and in fact, my brother that's nearest my age, he's a state champion, and he was, of course, when I say nearest my age, he's eight years older than me. So I was kind of living in his shadow in a, in a small little town. And, you know, he was there pushing me the whole time. And, you know, so it was just part of it's a kind of a family tradition. And then it kind of just stuck with us. And uh, like my class that I was in, especially my freshman year, we had about 10 guys wrestling in a school, roughly 200 and some students in it. We had 10 freshmen. Wow. And, and so we were pretty deep and all of us were pretty good. Like all of us were right there competing and, you know, through the years, you know, I, I was ranked several of the guys I was ranked with. And like even my freshman year, I was the JV kid to another freshman who was a state runner up that year. Wow. And we both ended up with, well, he ended up with a lot better record than I did, but even my record as a freshman, I was over 750 and, uh, you know, he was a little bit better and he, you know, he's going to the state finals. So, you know, within our room, we had a lot of tough competition and, you know, and then we go to regions and, you know, that's some of the best teams in the in the state were in our region. So, you know, a lot of tough competition when I was growing up. With a brother that did as well as he did, was that a lot of pressure on you to do the same? You know, there there was, especially in the small town, you know, it's kind of like a Philip area, you know, where everyone just knows the history of wrestling. Uh-huh. And then and in, in my wrestling room, all the state champion names, they're hand painted on our mats, on the wall mats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a constant reminder when you see your brother's name sitting there, <laughs> you know, and people walk in because it was also a weight room. And like, hey, is that, is that your brother? And I said, oh, of course, that's my brother. And they're like, oh, he's pretty good. And so, you know, you know, and they're like, oh, how good are you going to be? So, you know, I, I did have a lot of that pressure. You know, it's a lot of pressure, like my youngest son, who's a freshman this year, you know, and my oldest son who graduated two years ago. You know, my oldest son was a four-time state qualifier in South Dakota. And, and my youngest son, he's still on that kind of same type of pressure. Sure. Um, but he's already got a leg up, I guess, because he's a two-time state qualifier already, and he's only a freshman this year. So he's trying to really set the mark. Is it important to start young? You know, there's a lot of theories out there. And for me personally, I don't think you have to like be competing at a young age. I think getting kids, young kids on a mat like for practices and stuff, especially when you go like internationally, like over in Russia and stuff, kids don't start competing until they're like 13 or 14 years old, but mm-hmm. they're practicing on a mat when they're like four or five, six years old, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good way to kind of introduce one. I also coach our little uh, Cavs wrestling club. And I got I get a whole lot of new parents every year that have no, have no idea about wrestling. And I tell them, you know, let the kid judge when he's ready to compete. I said, but especially where they don't know anything really yet, let them just enjoy practice, have fun at practice. Uh, cause what, you know, what I've seen a lot now is there's a lot of stud AAU kids and you don't see that transition into high school wrestling. You know, there's been a lot of state AAU placers that you never hear of in the high school. And I think a lot of it's because you can wrestle three or four times a week, you know, in tournaments and stuff. And by the time, you know, they're hitting that 11, 12, 13 year age, they're kind of getting burnt out a little bit. So competition wise, I don't really push and pressure at young ages, but getting them in the practice room, just have them rolling around and having fun with them. You know, that that's real important, I think. They learn some basic things at that young age that help them when they do start competing. Yes. You know, and, and I think that's the biggest thing and keeping it fun because, you know, a lot of kids, they get out there and they might get their rear end kicked a few times when they're young and just give up on the sport, you know, just, you know, some tournaments they might go to, there might be some really good kids at their weight class. And if they're first timers, you know, because sometimes that happens, you know, tournaments try to match up ability wise, but you can't always do that. And, you know, some kids just give up after they get whooped up on a couple of times. And that's one of the struggles I see is, you know, keeping kids out. And I think if we take less pressure off of competing and, you know, just focus on letting them learn the sport a little bit more, you know, and then once they get in middle school, you know, they go to the, join the middle school teams to have a little school spirit and have a, you know, competing against other middle schoolers. And that's when you really start seeing which kids, you know, can really excel. Growing up, did you play some other sports too, Nick? Yeah, I was always a three-sport athlete. You know, in a small town out in the middle of nowhere, there was nothing to do uh, except sports. So I, 
I was played on a two-time uh, state runner-up football team. Uh, of course, I wrestled, and then I also did track for three years and baseball for a year. Who were some of the other towns close by with it, from Burlington, Colorado? Who would you compete against? Um, well, probably our biggest rival is this town called Ray, Colorado, that's mm-hmm. north of us, about an hour. Mm-hmm. And, and they're kind of in the same boat Burlington was. Um, you know, a lot of just tough farm kids. But like in our region and for our district, um, we actually had to travel all the way from up to into the mountains to go against like Estes Park. Um, we went to a town in uh, Roosevelt Rough Riders, which was in Johnstown, Colorado, which is up by Fort Collins. So for our conference, I guess you would say, our nearest competitor was Bennett, which was two hours away. Mm-hmm. And so we were traveling all the time, but we had enough local teams that were roughly a little bit smaller than us that we could go to smaller tournaments. And then, of course, we could always hop the border to Kansas, where when I was growing up, Goodland, Kansas, which is 30 miles away, they were one of the tops in their state as well. So it was just in our area, really tough competition just there. So even though we had to travel, like Estes Park was a six hour trip into the mountains and stuff and wrestle there a few times throughout my career. But we had enough competition around our area where that got us better, but then we'd still have to travel to some, wrestle some of these other towns up in the foothills and up in the mountains. And the great thing is the communities in those small towns really support their local kids. Oh yeah. It was, you know, that was the one thing, you know, even if they didn't actually go watch you, they know what was happening. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the paper was there all the time, letting people know, You'd go like we'd go to the one donut shop we had in the store, even though we weren't supposed to be in there. <laughs> um, you know, they would go there and, and the people there would be asking us, you know, yeah, I saw how you did on your match and they'd be talking to you. So, you know, that's the cool thing about small towns is, you know, especially where there's not a lot to do, they really get invested in a lot of, you know, high school athletics. And St. Thomas More has a good following, too. And this year, you had 10 wrestlers and you had two qualify for the state tournament. Who are those kids and how do they do? Yeah, my two qualifiers was my 120-pounder, Tyson Durham, and he qualified, and he went one and two at the state tournament and lost in the blood round. Um, but this, like I said, this was a second trip there, so he had a little more experience. He, he wasn't quite as nervous. He just, you know, a really tough Canton kid, and then he also had a really tough Phillip kid. So, you know, the competition, once you get to state, it's a whole different level, and he stepped up to it. It's just, you know, those guys were better that day, and then he ended up beating the kid from Lyman County, which was another tough kid that threw, was ranked for quite a bit of the state uh, throughout quite a bit of the year. And so that was a good win for him. And then my other state qualifier was at 160, Luke, Luke Bodine, and he's a junior. And this was his first time going to the state tournament. And so he got that shock and awe is what I call it. He walked in there and, you know, he sees it. He's like, well, it's, you know, it's smaller than rapid to the invite. But then when you actually get there and you got the fans screaming and you see how the organization of it has just ran, you know, you could tell he was, he was pretty nervous. And so I think this was a good year for him to get the experience and hopefully come back as a senior and, you know, maybe get on the podium next year. Tyson is your son? Yes. Tyson is my youngest. Yep. Yeah, he probably started young. Yeah. It's like his big thing was he, he, you know, he wanted to go, 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 go. And there was times we had to put the reins on him. Like, dude, you wrestled last, you know, just yesterday, you don't need to wrestle today. And, he was the kind of kid that just wanted to keep going and keep going. And when he was growing up, I was always coaching wrestling. And then, and then he saw his older brother was in the wrestling. So it was something that, you know, he has a, a true passion for. You bet. Well, we're looking forward to uh, following St. Thomas Moore again next year. And uh, Nick, uh, you know, it's been great talking some wrestling with you. And we appreciate you taking time to join us here on Black Hills TV. Yeah, thank you for having me again. 